he's not, then Vasquez gives him a hell of a goal. This could be an interesting competitive fight. Most of the fights for Vasquez have been in Mexico. Most of the fights for Prescott have been in his native Colombia. This could come into play a little, little bit of a intangible here. Prescott was cut over his left eye in his last fight, Joe. See whether or not that plays into the mix. What I like about Prescott, first of all, you, I think you can see it just by the makeup of the two guys. Prescott is physically strong. And he's probably going to push the fight a little bit. Prescott, you know, wants to use that physicality. But I give him credit for usually getting full extension on his punches. He does a pretty good job. He usually doesn't do that. He doesn't usually reach him with big wide left hooks. Does a pretty good job of making sure that he controls range. Doesn't just fall in. Uses that height you talked about. Knows how to be tall. And Vasquez, he fights scared. You know, not in a bad way, but in a good way. Like he's he's on edge all the time. You right. know, he's, he's on the outside. He's using that long skinny jab. And he waits for you to take a chance sometimes. And as soon as you do, as soon as you miss a little bit, then he's looking to pull the trigger. Prescott. Big swinger with that right hand there. As Vasquez was able to get out of the way. Just watch Vasquez when they break. Little nervous energy there. He bangs those gloves together. He jitters the hands around. He drops his hands. He touches his trunks. And I think that extra movement in his hands, Prescott has to find a way. First of all, he's got to be aware of it. Hopefully, his people have looked at the film and they're aware. There's a good stiff jab right on the chin and knocked down. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho. So a knockdown scored in round number one. Vasquez not greatly affected there. Both men came forward with the jab, and it was Prescott who landed his. And with the extra momentum of Vasquez coming forward, he ended up going back on his seat. Again, you see the physicality advantage to Prescott early. You see that jittiness, that jittiness of Vasquez on the outside, bouncing a little bit, using that jab, waiting for Prescott to commit a little bit. And when he commits, that's when Vasquez will pull the trigger, let the shots go. You know, we talked on the top a little bit when we were breaking down the fighters tonight. Talked about Prescott every once in a while. He'll step back with his left hand down. That's an opportunity for Vasquez to follow him with the right hand. Vasquez, Prescott, end of one. The jab's not important. Who says the jab can't be powerful? Right there. Left jab, nothing more from Prescott. Drops Vasquez. Take another look at it. Again, the man in the red, Prescott, times that jab just at the right time when there's an opening, and Vasquez, his knees are buckled. Never got the water, but we're going to find out in a few minutes if he gets the win. Tenth and final round. You saw the swollen left eye of the unbeaten Brady Prescott. Teddy Atlas has him trailing to Miguel Vasquez. 88-82. You would have to think that the ringside judges fall in line. Vasquez had a 21-6 connect advantage in the ninth. 145 punches landed to 89 overall in the fight. It has been a masterful performance by Miguel Vasquez ever since he went down in the first round. Keep in mind, that's how this fight started. So I watch the fight, sometimes I think about, you know, those little axioms, those little sayings that people a lot wiser than us made up, they made up for a reason. I think about the axiom, never judge a book by its cover. And I think about what I'm seeing here with Vasquez. You know, you would have looked at him and judged him by his cover. You would have said, okay, Prescott, you know, maybe competitive, but... Prescott wins the fight. For a lot of chapters to the book of Vasquez. And a lot of tricks in those chapters. And Vasquez has shown them in a very subtle way. Vasquez came into this bout with three losses. Two were to Saul Alvarez. The other one was to the current junior welterweight titleist, Tim Bradley. But they were all at the higher weight. He's been managed properly in the course of the past year. 
with the Capatio team and Antonio Margarito. And now he has found himself. There was a stabbing left hand from off the hip from Vasquez. And just over a minute to go, maybe just over a minute away from a signature win at this point in his career. He's only 22 years old. And on the doorstep of an upset of an unbeaten top 10 fighter in the world. You know, he does unorthodox things, but he does effective things, Vasquez. Sometimes his shootout, you said that that hook came from the hip. You know, he'll shoot out the jab, he'll shoot the hook out, and as he's shooting it out, he's already moving his head. And it gives, first of all, it gives no target for Prescott to come back on, but also it just gives a, a real funky look to the eyes of Prescott. Prescott has been confused. He's been frustrated. And he has not been creative. Prescott has pretty much stayed the course. You know, he's tried, but he hasn't made any adjustments in that trying. So Miguel Vasquez came to Las Vegas hoping to hit a jackpot. He may find out that he did just that in moments when we hear from the judges. Brady Prescott, the punch track fight recap. And look at the jabs, 86 of 284. Total punches dominated there, 160 to 98. Teddy scorecard. Remember, a 10-8 round to open things up because of the knockdown scored by Prescott. But then Vasquez starts to come after it and controls Teddy's scorecard, 98 92. What says Jake Gutierrez? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of lightweight action, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. Here we go again. Judge Dwayne Ford scores the ballot. 95 and 94 for Vasquez. Judge Dave already scored the ballot. 97 and 92 for Prescott. And Judge. Jerry Ross scored the ballot 96-93 for the winner by split decision, Miguel Titare Vasquez. The right guy won. The right guy won the fight, Miguel Vasquez. 97-92 for Prescott is hard to uh, digest. Well, you know, that's one of the problems.